The fifth step in, the, in constructing the gearbox assembly is adding the worm gear shaft. To add the worm gear shaft, go up to the assembly tab and click on insert components. You may get a dialog box that pops up like this, or you may not, depending on how SolidWorks is configured on your computer. If you don't, you can press browse in the property manager. Find your worm gear shaft. It should be 213A104. Double click and now at your cursor should be a graphics preview of the worm gear shaft as you prepare to place it into the graphics area of the assembly. If you don't have a graphics preview then go over to the property manager under options and click the box for graphics preview. As far as placing our worm gear shaft in the assembly, you can left click anywhere in the graphics area to insert the component. If you left click and drag, you can move the component. If you right click, if you right click and drag, you can rotate the component. In order to constrain this worm gear shaft to the rest of the assembly, we need to use something called mates. You'll see down in the task pane that that it, that it says our assembly is underdefined. Now that usually is something that's reserved for sketches. We fully define sketches. But SolidWorks uses the same terminology, the same language, to describe how an assembly is constrained so that we can know if our uh, uh, assembly is fully constrained to the point where nothing is allowed to move or if it's still underdefined and we need to add mates to fully define it. To find the mate command, go to the assembly tab of the command manager. It's right next to insert components and click mate. First we'll add a concentric mate between the between the cylindrical per portion of the shaft and the, in, and the inner diameter of the side cover. SolidWorks automatically guesses that we want to do a concentric mate, which we can see in the property manager here. This is exactly what we want, so press OK to confirm the mate selection. If you left click and drag your worm gear shaft, you'll see that now the centers between the worm gear shaft and the side cover are shared. The next mate we'll add is a coincident mate between the left face of our worm gear shaft shoulder and the front face of the side cover. SolidWorks automatically guesses that we want to do a coincident mate because these are two planar faces and coincident mates w work perfectly with two planar faces and they also work pretty well with with points. To confirm the selection click OK in the property manager and also click OK again to end the mate command because we are done adding mates to constrain the worm gear shaft to the gearbox assembly. But you'll notice that the assembly is still underdefined, and if we were to left click and drag on the on the shoulder of the worm gear shaft, we would see that it's still able to rotate. Although this means it's un underdefined, this is intended movement for the design of our gearbox assembly. Our gearbox won't work properly if this shaft is not able to rotate freely. That's why this shaft is, a, is able to rotate freely, and our offset shaft is also able to rotate freely. Now is a, a good time to take some notes to, to record some of the things that we've done in this, in this video. I've prepared a Microsoft Word document for you to look at to get some ideas for notes to write down based off what we've gone over in this section. 
such as inserting components and making a graphics preview show up when we insert components, a adding a concentric mate, as well as adding a coincident mate, and why we left our worm gear shaft free to rotate in the, uh, in the assembly.